June. The state. Charges of first degree murder and attempted robbery. Happening now, one of the great events that happens every year, Larry Fitzgerald's annual Celebrity Supper Club is underway in Scottsdale. The special dinner raises money for Fitzgerald's first down fund that supports Valley Charities. Our Christy Siefkin is live on the red carpet. This is a great event because it, you're hanging out with like the coolest person ever, Larry Fitzgerald, and you're eating great food. Eating perhaps food served by Larry Fitzgerald himself. One of the cool things about this event, Carrie, is that pro players come out and they're the ones bringing you your drinks, bringing you your dinner. And I'm here with Jeff Mastro, who is the founder and CEO of Dominic Steakhouse. How do these guys do out here on the floor? Are they pretty good servers? Uh, they're okay, but it's, uh, you can tell it's not their full-time job. <laughs> do people leave them tips at the end of the night? Uh, not so much, no. <laughs> they should stick to the court or the field, it sounds like. I, I would think so, but it's a lot of fun. They Everybody, they, they're able to mingle with the guests, so it's a great event. Wonderful. Uh, Carson Palmer's going to be out here a little bit uh, later. We've heard that Michael Floyd is as well. And you've got some great entertainment. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, John Sally is going to be the MC for the evening. And then uh, it's uh, hilarious is the hilarious is the uh, logo. And uh, Sinbad is the enter entertainment tonight. Fabulous. And all of this benefits a great organization. Can you talk to us a little bit about the philanthropic piece? Sure. This is uh, you know, Larry Fitzgerald's first down. Fund is a tremendous organization. Uh, he, he supports all sorts of charities that help uh, help children and you know a athletic uh, um, endeavors for children and tries to get them moving around. But it's a great event, and we've been doing this for three years, and it's just terrific. Wonderful. Well, I know it's a busy night for you. We'll let you go to continue planning inside. Thank you so much, Jeff. Guys, we're going to continue to meet with some of the celebrities, pro athletes coming down the red carpet. We'll be back with you in our six o'clock show, and then later on this evening, once the event is is up and going, guys. Thanks, Christy. We lost a, a great one today. Gene Wilder, tremendous comic actor, best known for starring in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, of all things. But in comedies by filmmaker Mel Brooks, he was a staple. He was also a stage actor, gifted, and a screenwriter and author. Anything you want to do it, want to change the world. Other film roles for Wilder included Bonnie and Clyde, The Producers, and Blazing Saddles. Wilder faced a battle with cancer in 1999 and then beat non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He acted very little in his later years, staying away from the big screen but appearing occasionally on television. Gene Wilder was 83 years old. A lot of families in one North Phoenix community upset about new neighbors who've moved in. Those neighbors live here at the Maricopa Reentry Center. I'm Nicole Garcia. I'll have that story coming up. And turning to technology. Counseling and substance abuse counseling for job services for newly released inmates. Fox 10's Nicole Garcia joins us now with more on why some parents are not very happy with this new center. Well, some parents feel it's literally too close to their homes. Right now, nearly 60 felons, many of whom are sex offenders, are living there. Let me show you exactly where this facility is located. It's right off I-17 and Pinnacle Peak Road in North Phoenix. And let me show you where it is in relation to, this is Sandra Day O'Connor High School, and this is a large community center. Um, so both these areas where a lot of families and kids gather are just about a mile away from this facility. Now, the majority of people that live here. They've done 85% of their time already and they're on supervised release. Parents really upset about how close this facility is to their homes, to schools, and they also feel that the DOC didn't do enough to notify them before they opened up the facility. Um, as of August 16th, there were 48 residents there. 26 of them were um, level 2 and level 3 sex offenders, um, and they do have ankle monitors on. This North Phoenix mother of three has been very vocal with the Arizona Department of Corrections, demanding answers and airing her issues about this new reentry center. While it's not directly next to homes or schools, Julie Reed says it's close enough to cause concern. We 
let our older children, you know, go to the shops at Norterra and go to Harkins Movie Theater and walk around. And, and I understand there's sex offenders who live everywhere all over the valley. They, they live in our neighborhoods, but to bring a popu, you know, such a dense population and to move them into one location is, is concerning. The Department of Corrections says all the inmates who live here at this re-entry facility must come back here. They have a curfew every day between 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock at night. Now, if they don't come back or if they're late, officers have the ability to track them down using their ankle monitors. And if they don't come back or if they don't have a legitimate reason for being late, they could go back to jail. Some parents are also complaining the corrections department didn't do enough to notify residents. A public hearing was not required, but one was held back in May. However, many families didn't find out about the hearing or the re-entry center and the offenders it would house until these letters were sent home by the Deer Valley Unified School District in August. By then, the new neighbors had already moved in. I think that just brings a sense of fear, you know, just in general, as far as when you see somebody that walk, that's walking into, you know, a restaurant or store and they have an ankle monitor on. Now, the Department of Corrections did not make anybody available today to comment on camera about this issue. That facility can house up to 100 offenders, and all schools within a three-mile radius of that center are considered exclusion zones, which means that the offenders can't enter those areas, and their ankle monitors will alert correctional officers if they do go into school areas. Reporting live, I'm Nicole Garcia, Fox 10 News. Well, it was a nice weekend. A little